name is Marcus Morton, that's M-A-R-C-U-S-M-O-R-T-O-N, and I'm the president and co-founder of Network Foundation Technologies, also known as Nifty TV. Uh, we have a business in live video distribution. Uh, it's the fastest growing market in video on the internet. Um, most people are familiar with YouTube and finished file video, but what we specialize is long form linear video, uh, things like sports broadcasting, uh, political broadcasting, news, weather, anything that would be live and linear where all the viewers around the world want to see it at the same time in its premiere. Well, we founded the company here in Louisiana. Um, I'm born and raised originally from Shreveport. I went to Louisiana Tech uh, for both my degrees, but left the uh, state in the music business. I was working, uh, working my way up to vice president at EMI Records, and of course EMI owns Capital and Virgin and I think 14 or 15 other labels at the time. Um, left that, went into the technology business with Dr. O'Neill uh, on a company that we sold to Earthlink, and then also I had a, a a time spent in the uh, movie business and on the California Film Commission for seven years under Governor Davis and Governor Schwarzenegger. Uh, and my biggest goal of um, activity with Nifty in Louisiana was the fact that you've got all of the right education here in one place. You've got all the potential uh, people to employ that are here looking for jobs and they're looking for jobs to stay in the state, not to go to Austin, not to go to Dallas, not to go to Atlanta but they're looking for jobs that fulfill their degrees in engineering and to stay in the state. And so we saw that there was a really an unserved market uh, in starting a technology company here and being able to hire students from the Louisiana higher education system, whether that's LSU, Grambling, Tech, ULL, what have you. Well, I think the, the, the idea around uh, Nifty TV certainly started with uh, Dr. O'Neill, but my background in both uh, the music business and the uh, film business, um, really I think together with Mike's general idea that delivering video over the internet was gonna become very expensive as the numbers of people um, basically tuned in online uh, or even on their mobile device. You, what you see is the more people that tune in to view a live video stream or a linear video stream, the cost increases with each additional viewer. Now that's a very bad thing if you're a broadcaster because what you see is your costs going up. And so how does that translate to the actual uh, end viewer of that content? It translates in so much as they either have to pay a pay-per-view with their credit card, which no one likes. I mean, that's not what the internet's about. That's not what people have come to uh, expect from the internet. So you generally have real small audiences when you provide a pay-per-view model. Um, so we saw that there was a, a clear cut market to provide a service and a software that would allow people to broadcast online in a linear fashion to large audiences all over the world and be free to the end viewer, uh, make it so cheap that the broadcaster could add support that broadcast and make money from it while the viewer can see it for free. And so what we've found by doing that is that the audiences explode when the uh, content is free online. Well, science and technology are, are critical to us, and, and the part of that science and technology has to be, uh, has to have the bedrock at the uh, college level, because you're going to really have a hard time being in a technology business if you're in a location that doesn't provide you for uh, graduates from the college to, to basically fuel your growth as a company. I mean, we hire a lot of uh, Louisiana graduates from Louisiana Tech University. We hire a lot, of, uh, a lot of local people that don't want to leave the state when they graduate, and also a lot of people that want to come back to the state that have been out of the state working in technical jobs. So you have to have that base uh, for a technology business like ours. And the interesting thing about Louisiana as a marketplace, uh, we've had a lot of great colleges for many, many years that are top in, in our particular need, which is uh, computer science engineering. We've had a, a lot of those people educated. They always seem to leave the state because there aren't any jobs here in that curriculum. So it's very important that you have that education process and, and without that you can't take the next level um, to grow your company. 
or if you do, you're talking about importing people in from the West Coast or from Austin, and wherever that is, it gets to be very expensive because then you're trying to compete with people with Silicon Valley mindsets and, and pay paychecks. Well, our students at Louisiana Tech are, are, are specifically, um, I think, very well educated, uh, and location is important to us. Had we been in Baton Rouge, we'd be probably using univer you know, LSU students. Had we been in, in Lafayette, it would have been ULL students. You know, right now where we are, we use a lot of students from Louisiana Tech. We use a lot of students from Grambling, just because we're right here. Um, but all of the students that are educated in the computer science um, curriculum in Louisiana are underused. I mean, our state could use a lot more technology businesses here. You've got you've got jobs that are gr green jobs for the most part if they're in the technology business. You've got higher salaries for the most part, and our education system has been educating these people in this curriculum for the, you know, since the 60s we've had these schools. All you have to do um, if you're at Louisiana Tech is pan over to Wiley Tower. I mean, Charles and Sam Wiley, uh, two of the, some of the most successful people to come out of Louisiana, got their education in computers at Louisiana Tech in the 60s, started university computing, and sold that, I think, in 1968 for a substantial amount of money, and of course helped donate to build that building, Wiley Tower, over here. So we've been doing this for a long time. The disconnect is we haven't been helping to uh, lure and even more importantly create the jobs from within the state and that is the real key critical piece that we have if we've we've made the uh, effort to educate these people now let's keep them paying taxes and give them jobs and make sure that we can facilitate getting jobs here and I will tell you that the state of Louisiana in the last three years has come a very long way towards that goal Well, sustainability is incredibly important, and as you see the critical mass, we're not the critical mass yet. We're moving forward in the right direction. I mean, you're starting to see the, the whole state gel uh, as kind of a, a, a one mindset when it comes to technology, whether that's the uh, Louisiana Technology Council, whether that's the LISTA group. All of the uh, technology uh, individuals and companies involved from, from, state to, from any point on this state have really started to gel together. And, and as we get the critical mass, uh, I think you will just need to see programs that put the word out about Louisiana. Um, some of the things we need immediately, though, we need to address the angel tax incentive program uh, as it speaks to high-tech businesses. Uh, the first program that's now sunsetted uh, was a little bit loose on whether or not you could put some uh, oil and gas things in there or whatnot. But the fact of the matter is they need to focus that down on high-tech, uh, software high-tech, um, engineering high tech uh, and they need to put that uh, back in place in some form uh, and I know there's uh, discussion right now going on in this session about how they would accomplish something like that either this session or next session but the fact of the matter is we need to really look at the incentive programs to not only have one or two companies come here or start here but we need to get the momentum in place with the angel incentive program or a similar program and then we also need to do ongoing programs uh, that I think should mirror our film tax credit program and also our film infrastructure program that we've let sunset. We need to mirror those programs in the technology business. And the reason is to start a technology company and have a successful technology company is vastly more lucrative to the state than, say, having a film come or having multiple films come because you're going to have a knowledge base built around that company. That company is not going to be able to pick up and move. Generally, films are here for 30 to 60 days, some 90 days, and then they're gone. And then you've got to constantly replace that film. Now, I'm not saying retract where we are with the film business. The film business is critically important for its own right. But the technology business should be on par with where the film business is. Uh, and if you want to go down the line of the incentive program that, that sunsetted and some of the things to fix it, I'd be happy to explain my point of view to that. And, and I have a pretty unique point of view having spent the last... Uh, you know, since I moved here last year, the last uh, 15 years in California and three or four years before that in New York. So. Well, well, we've got to get that momentum point in place and we've got to get it to a point where it sustains itself. Uh, I don't think anybody is uh, of the mindset that they want government incentives to be the driver for business and that's not the way it should be. But what 
we're looking at at Louisiana as a particularly unique situation where we've invested a lot of money in higher education for engineers. Now we need to jumpstart the business end of that. And it's absolutely no different than, than what happened really in Silicon Valley. It was jumpstarted into being in business by the state of California at the time and also by the federal government at the time. And then it got a power of its own. Um, but you can look at the, uh, the Silicon Valley as a real good example, clear-cut example of what we can be uh, here as a Silicon Bayou, if you will. Well, from that perspective, I think some of the most interesting things is where we are as a state. We, we've got a really long way to go before we have to worry about our salaries being overinflated and our, our land values and home values and price values and just cost of living being overinflated, like I think it was in Silicon Valley. Um, obviously, there was benefits to being in that area for a long period of time. I think some of those benefits have, have, have moved on, and a lot of the reasons you know, are cost of living, salary, and such like that. So I don't think we really have to worry about that in the foreseeable future, and I'm talking you know, 5, 10, 15 years. Um, we have nothing but growth on our horizon. We need to jumpstart the, uh, the engine as far as it goes with starting tech companies here and bringing tech companies here and incentivizing these graduates that are coming out of our universities to start their own companies here. That's really what's going to become the driver for our Silicon Bayou here in Louisiana. Really, uh, that's a very big question that would take a, a really long time if you want to dive down on all the angles of it. But the universities are super key to that. Uh, educa education is already here, so now we need to retain those people we're educating in these fields. So the universities are key to that university partnership with all of the uh, technology businesses. And that's a big piece of what's happening in Louisiana right now. It's really important. Beyond that, um, the state plays a major role in figuring out you know, where they're going to put incentives. Are they going to put incentives towards petroleum and you know, old style um, business in Louisiana? Or are they going to put incentives towards high tech business? Frankly, for my money, I would put the incentives towards the high tech businesses because that's going to be not only the future of Louisiana, but the future of the United States. You know, we're not going to out compete with some of these countries around the world for things like timber or even things like potential um, farming and uh, even other uh, petroleum. I mean, they'll have its own market as it, as it does. But where we have a real opportunity is in taking the, the higher education educated and retaining them in the state through high-tech jobs, whether that's homegrown jobs or, or jobs we bring in uh, from bringing companies in. But I have to tell you that there's a real danger if I was uh, the state or the economic development. There's a very big danger if you focus all your resources on trying to bring companies into the state because you're not going to have the same foothold as if you're able to start a company from the state where the founders and the, and the key employees there have relationships in the state, meaning their parents, their brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, what have you. Um, you know, I meet somebody talking about they're having a hard time wherever they're located. This, this doesn't just mean within the United States. I've met people from uh, actually from the United Kingdom, uh, from Wales, from actually France, just in the last three or four months that I've said, you need to think about moving your business to Louisiana if you're looking for a place to grow. I mean, we've got some pretty outstanding incentives. We're working on getting better incentives. We've got a very well-educated, um, high-tech base of uh, students and graduates here that want to stay in the state. Um, space is obviously, uh, cost of living is obviously another good one. There's a lot of, of points and based on that particular conversation I'm having, uh, I attack it from multiple different ways. But it's, it's a really easy sell and, and most of the time people have never thought of it or never heard of it. Um, you know, we have international flights into the state. That's, uh, that's a, a, a big bonus, particularly in the New Orleans area. So I talk about it all the time to a lot of people. And I think that um, literally every business person in Louisiana that has any interaction with anyone, not just located in various states, but located around the world, should be talking to them about it as well. I mean, it, it has to be a complete uh, program that everybody wants, not just you know one or two people talking great about the state because they've had success. Um, we've been extremely blessed being in Louisiana, and the state's been very good to us on every level. I mean, there's things we can always do better, and I think there's things that we're trying to do better with right now. But we've, uh, we've come a long, long way since this company started. Um, with the, the way of thinking that the, uh, the, that the state has and, and the 
the previous administration and the current administration have really have really followed up on uh, their promises to try to bring the high tech sector and grow the high tech sector the high tech sector into state and that's uh, that's very impressive a lot of times you find a lot of politicians uh, you know will tell you whatever they need to but they don't really follow up and we've seen that they're putting their money where their mouth is uh, to date and that's very important Well, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes of Louisiana, and there's a lot of stereotypes of people from the South. Usually, all I have to do is compare it to Atlanta, which is a, a very booming, you know, high-tech area, or Austin, which is a, you know, everybody knows that Apple's there, AMD is there. And, and essentially, Austin was a sleepy little town where people used to go to listen to music and party. Um, so you can combat all of that in comparison. But in the, in the, I think the South of the United States is changing drastically. One thing that a lot of people, when I, I bring people in, um, whether it's people from Cisco or whether it's people from various large companies, they see the, see the state. They're here, they want the technology, and they, they really like the people. One thing that a lot of people tell me that they're concerned about is that, you know, are we getting rid of our architect and trying to be something that we're not? You know, we have to, we have to really stay on um, guard for that, a guard against knocking down all our old buildings instead of rehabbing them and using them because right. the aesthetics, you're never going to fool anybody that we're in, you know, uh, Santa Monica, California in the middle of an August day. They're going to be very clear that they're in Louisiana. So, you know, there's no reason to erect buildings that look like you're in Santa Monica. People come here, they love the people, they love the food, they love the, 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 the education that people get from our universities, but they really need to feel like they're in Louisiana and they're in somewhere else that is a little bit different and it's a little bit different in a very good way. So I try to hit all those uh, marks when we're, when we're having those conversations. I would say strive to have some homegrown successes in the technology business. You know, you can go out and you can pay big company X a lot of money to come here, and they'll stay here for the term of that contract, and then likely is they'll pull up roots and leave because, you know, they probably didn't understand it to begin with. They just saw dollar signs. What you really need to do is incentivize homegrown success, and the homegrown success will be the engine that pulls in the other companies that say, hey, we need to be there, we need to expand there, and we need to be near that company that succeeded. So there's, a, there's, a, th that's, there's many ways to go to answer that question, but that's the way I would personally go. And, and, and I would really, uh, really want to hammer that point if I was speaking to the legislature. Well, I think one of the first key factors that's been our number one, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for Louisiana Tech University and Gramlin University. I mean, those are our first key. The universities uh, that have afforded us the ability for office space and the ability to grow, be their first customer and the first incubator they built, um, that's number one. Uh, number two, I think the uh, Louisiana Economic Development Department uh, has been a very big um, reason that we've been successful and that we are here in the state. Um, Myself and Dr. O'Neill are both from Louisiana. We both wanted to grow this company here, but as you already hit on, there's a lot of challenges even with stereotypes of, oh, you have a technology company that's in Louisiana? Wait a minute, it didn't get thought of in Boston? It didn't get thought of in Silicon Valley? Are we, are we sure this is real? Yeah, so having the support from the university and having support from economic development are the two keys. The other key that's really kept us in the state is having local investors uh, that are incentivized through the Angel Incentive Program or other programs that have backed us up when we needed to raise capital to grow and to, and to thrive in the state. Those are really the top three needs that I see that our company has benefited from and the reason that we're here. Uh, and and if, if we're not successful uh, for some reason, it'll be because we lost one of those legs. We have to have those legs. We have to have the university support. We have to have the support of the state government and the LED and we have to have the support of local investors. And, and I think without any one of those three, you're going to have a really big problem succeeding as a startup or early stage company in any state. Well, hopefully we grow to a point where we provide a whole bunch of jobs in the state of Louisiana on the, on the level of hundreds. Uh, and, and that provides back to the tax base of Louisiana and also to the the all-around greater well-being of property prices and, and dollar flowing through the system of people going to the dry cleaners, eating out, staying in hotels, and so on and so forth. 
but from the point of view of just a general viewer of, of, of uh, our technology, uh, why they might be proud about it is hopefully that right now they can turn on and watch any arena football game that they want to in the AFL League, which is the premier arena football league. They can watch any of the uh, professional bull riding through the PBR and other events like that. But in the future, we have goals that we will be able to um, use our technology to allow all the high schools uh, to broadcast their sports and their distance learning and their graduations to everyone out there, which I think everyone can, I think, come to the conclusion that having our children be savvy with technology as early as possible is going to be the best thing for the future in, in this economy. As well as on the personal level, your grandmother can't make it across country to see the graduation. She could tune in and watch it online. Um, those are some of the things that I think should make people very proud. And the fact that it was uh, essentially a homegrown company here with myself and Dr. O'Neill being Louisiana natives.